biggest club of humanity, the not enough club. Mm -hmm. I've been an executive member of this club for decades, so I can talk from quite some experience. I'm still a member of this club, but it's just from time to time that I visit the club and don't stay there too long. Uh, but every time that I feel triggered anyway by whatever happens, I am back in the club. What is the Not Enough? The Not Enough Club is a club where the people join who have a fear-based limiting belief. And there are three levels of subscription. There are people there because they believe I don't have enough to survive. People who believe I'm not loved enough, I'm not lovable enough to belong. And three, I am not good enough to do what I want to do, what I'm supposed to do. And I have to show to everybody how good I am. Ladies and gentlemen, hi there, all of you amazing souls. Welcome back, Monday Talkers. I'm Daniel Tokat, your host, and today we dive into the unknown with a new guest, Patrick Summers. Hi, Patrick. Hello, Daniel. So great to be here with you. Happy Monday. Thank you. So, guys, if you are ready to have assumptions as challenged, or your curiosity ignited, or your leadership lens forever altered, Let's embark a journey today addressed by Not Enough Club. Becomes a nice, powerful starting point. So before we get started into diving to the, into this treasure, uh, trove of wisdom, uh, here is a little something from the heart. Everything you do, every subscription, every like, every share means the world to us. It's not about numbers. It's about incredible community we're building together. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. It's more than just support. It's a journey. We're taking it together to spread those great minds and their greater stories. All right. Let's get started by addressing a question as a very, very first question to Patrick. Who is Patrick Summers? Hello, Daniel. Who am I? Um, how many hours do we have to talk about this? Um, <laughs> at this stage of life, I would say, yes, I am partner Dubai of a conscious consulting, a consultancy firm in um, uh, the Emirates, partner Dubai. I work globally with leaders, with teams. It's nice to hear you talking about numbers. I'm not a number person. And I realize people need numbers, need data, data points. But I'm always interested in the story of people behind numbers. Because everybody, yeah, everything changes. People have to adapt to changes. Um, is it okay that I share a secret with you that you won't share with anybody else except for the people in your community? Most welcome. The big... The big secret of change is, number one, organizations don't change. If you want to change an organization, you can't because they don't. Mm. Number two, people change. And so if you want to change an organization, you look at changing the people. Mm. And number two is leaders first if you want to change the people to start with the leaders if the leaders want to change their organization and they don't want to be changed themselves, then i can't work with them and i don't work with them because this is a waste of time energy and money for them and for me okay so are you saying that changing the leader could change the organization message vision mission or it will stay or remain the same? My take is I look at the culture of the organization. And the culture is not about what they do. It is about how do they do what they do? And how is the employee experience? 
how do they feel by doing what they do, what they have to do. Mm -hmm. And there is a relation between how they feel and how they perform and achieve. Mm -hmm. So better they feel, the better they will, the more they will be engaged and motivated to be at their best. Okay, talking and about so feelings, talking about feelings of people that are integrating this company. So let's yeah. go to the roots. Can you share your insights on why so many people struggle with feelings of inadequacy uh, and lack of belonging in, in, in the work environment there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what people want is getting their needs met. And when you get your needs met, then you feel good until you feel that you need something else. When people feel a sense of belonging, as you said, and they feel part of it, they feel seen, then they will feel motivated to become a better person and to do their best. I'm talking about culture. I'm talking about how they do what they do. And the culture is almost defined by the quality of the relationships between the people in the team and with their leader and how the habits, behaviors, interactions happen or not. Who in my... The who, who defines the environment, the culture? Oh, leaders are... have to align uh, 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 personal goals with the company goals? Is it leaders or is it the employee themselves? It's a good question. Everybody is part of the system, the social system that we call an organization. Yeah, And everybody has an impact, but some people have more impact. And we measure culture by mapping values on levels of consciousness, and I'll come back to that uh, later. But... What we see is very often the culture of an organization is a reflection of the consciousness of the leaders. And this is the actual leadership team or previous leaders whose energy and history is still in the system. And so if you want to change the culture, you have to talk to the leaders and look at how are the behaviors and the interactions of the leaders with their people because that colors the culture, and that has a huge impact. Gallup discovered that the number one reason why people leave an organization is because of the relationship with their leader, with their boss, with their manager, as you know. Well, that's exactly the point. And so we don't want to blame the leaders, we want to make them aware. We want to look at conscious leaders who are willing to self-reflect and think about how is the world around me a mirror of my world inside? My world inside is what I think, what I feel, what I experience in my body, and what I feel urged to do. And how is the context impacting you as a leader? And how do you as a leader can impact the context, your team? Impact. And this self leaders, this is so important. And what is the number one condition for self-reflection is slowing down and allowing a moment of silence in your head to reflect, which is the polar opposite of what everybody is doing by the busyness, the daily business in life. But slowing down to speed of reflection for self-reflective leadership which will give you more effective things. Okay talking about impact on the workplace. How do these feelings manifest in professional settings and affect um, employees' engagement and productivity? Yeah. You mentioned the biggest club in the world, the biggest club of humanity, the Not Enough Club. Mm -hmm. I've been an executive member of this club for decades, so I can talk from quite some experience. I'm still a member of this club, but it's just from time to time that I visit the club and don't stay there too long. Uh, but every time that I feel triggered anyway by whatever happens, I am back in the club. What is the Not Enough? The Not Enough Club is a club where the people join 
who have a fear-based limiting belief. And there are three levels of subscription. There are people who are there because they believe I don't have enough to survive. People who believe I'm not loved enough, I'm not lovable enough to belong. And three, I am not good enough to do what I want to do, what I'm supposed to do. And I have to show to everybody how good I am. These three not enough beliefs are all fear-based. The fear of not enough. And this fear creates an energy that results in dysfunctional behavior. If a person, if a leader believes that there is not enough to survive, not enough is never enough. That means a company or a person has never enough. And this never enough is planting the seed for greed. Hmm. Because it's never enough. Okay, if let's, let's, we, let's take this into, into uh, uh, shift the narrative a little bit and say, what practical steps can individuals or organization take to combat this need, this uh, these negative self perceptions, or not enough, uh, forced to to and foster a culture uh, of appreciation and belonging. Let's take it into actions. What 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 mm. actions need to be done? What? Actions. The first action is being open to a message where you look at yourself and become aware of it. The number two action is allowing a coach, a, a person who can help you to look at where does that come from and how can I cope with it is for yourself. I, I work also a lot with mindfulness to allow people to have these thoughts and to like it and to see from there okay, part of the beginning of change is allowing it to be rather than resisting but an important thing in the team is creating a space of vulnerability where a leader can share with the team about his or her struggles and invite others to help him to to cope with this not enough energy. Leadership is collective leadership. And as a team, you can help each other. Mm -hmm. I, did, I did during the pandemic, my master's in psychology, which was a lifelong thing that I didn't happen, that was didn't think it was going to happen. And my thesis was about psychological safety. And the best definition that I came across from Tim Clark, because we have Amy Edmondson about fearless organization and psychological safety, but Tim Clark talks about a culture of rewarded vulnerability, where people are not only invited, but also rewarded to be vulnerable. And what do you do as a leader in the first place? You make the people feel safe and included mm -hmm. by sharing personal things and inviting them to share. This is a great thing to do. The second thing, if you want uh, practical things, make people feel safe to, um, to learn and to develop and to ask questions and, and to share mistakes. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is, we see that high-performing teams that work, um, together and they contribute how safe is it for you in a team to use your skills your knowledge your experience and how much is the leader inviting people to come to contribute okay the taking this yeah to a bigger to a, a higher level and uh, yeah. let's say understanding the landscape of, of the work environment yeah. what are the main factors driving the high job turnover rate in the UAE, for example. Like, I, yeah. I'm talking about employee retention. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question because these numbers are significant. So um, a latest survey of PwC revealed about well-being at work revealed that there is a big gap between how employees perceive the company and how the C-suite perceives company. For instance, mental well-being, according to the C-suite perspective, that they say that employee well-being has changed and improved and they say 70%, 77%. Whereas mm. the employees talking about their own mental well-being, they is only 33% says that it has improved. So there is a big gap. There is a big gap. And it's not surprising. Beyond. It's not surprising, sorry, that according to this report, 60% of the employees are seriously considering quitting a job oh. and looking for a job that more supports their well-being. Now, if you look at the numbers, if you look at the numbers in the UAE, after the pandemic, we had 56% of the employees that uh, intended to change of job. That was a Hayes Middle East survey. But the latest survey now, Robert Half in 23, talks about 69% of employees in the UAE are likely to look for a new job. Wow. So what does that say about their experience? And what can we as a leader do to give them a better experience that helps them to, yeah, to stay? That's, and it's that's serious. No, the numbers are very serious. So yeah. it's not about salary. It's, no. it's beyond salary. So it's beyond salary. What's, what, 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 what strategies, apart from this financial incentive, can, can business implement to create more attractive, fulfilling work environment for their employees? So we, I work with Barrett Diagnostics, a values-based diagnostic to measure the culture in an organization and to measure the energy of leaders in, um, in an organization. And what we notice is the leaders who are exceptional and make a positive difference and clearly are able to keep the people in their team longer than average are people who, first of all, invest in positive, inspiring relationships. Mm -hmm. Secondly, are able to align a team around a shared purpose, which is aligned with the purpose of the organization, the leader, and the team members. Talking about why are you here? Why do you work here? What is it that gets you out of your bed and you're excited in the morning to go to work? And sharing this and finding this common language, this common ground of shared purpose in a safe environment with positive relationships, well, of course, money is important and the cost of mm -hmm. living is a struggle and people need to have enough to survive. But I also see people who are willing to give up on their salary so that at least they feel good in the world and in the environment they do. Mm -hmm. And how is work giving them a sense of fulfillment because the money alone doesn't give that sense of fulfillment it gives a sense of yeah i can survive if i have enough to survive but people are not born to survive people are born to flourish and thrive and ideally also at work and if you have to do a job where you feel used and manipulated for the whole day, and you need to wait until the end of your working day to feel that you can flourish and thrive because you're not at work. So I don't want to live such a life. My life is too short and too precious. I want to be focused on the things that I'm really good at, that I love, what I can make a difference in the world, and what I can be paid for. And these are the four elements of the Japanese Ikigai for your purpose. Yeah. Nice. So in, in short, uh, let's summarize actionable tips for um, uh, business owners or managers or leaders can take to improve the retention of their employees. If they want to take action now, 
one, two, three, four. They want to take action now. They want to influence so that people feel good and can stay. First thing, remember that the, the employee experience is important. It's not about what you ask them to do, but about how do you make them feel. Hmm. And if you are a role model of open, positive, safe environment, then this role model will have a positive impact. Remember, it is about how you make them feel more than what you ask them to do. It's the energy in the interaction that counts. Second thing, if you want people to change and make it in a positive way, make clear that they understand what is asked and that it makes sense for them. And it's not because you share a message and that you understand the message, that people understand it and feel understood. I had last week in the workshop and I had to say to the leader, I see you struggling with your anger and frustration and you complain to me that people don't listen to you and they don't understand you. But the secret there is, if you want them to listen to you and understand you, make them feel heard and understood and mm -hmm. see that you listen to them and understand them first. Mm. The third thing is looking at the structures and the systems and the processes in place. And if you want to have a positive employee experience, look at what are the barriers in the system that could be removed and that help people to have a positive experience. There are always more and more and more rules and people feel squeezed in a system of rules. And what if there is a system that allows them to get, have some space to be rewarded for vulnerability, for psychological safety, where there is space that they can discuss and talk about how do we do this together? That it's not only action focused, but that there is space for a people conversation. Mm -hmm. And maybe, and maybe, and that's the fourth thing, maybe you have to look at yourself as a leader and at your people on what are the skills and what are the opportunities that they need to behave in a new way. And then I go back to um, very often emotional intelligence is something that people are lacking. Talking about feelings, being aware of feelings, managing feelings um, is still a big struggle. And we are all really focused on the I, eh, IQ, but the EQ, the emotional intelligence is going to benefit the relationships, benefit the experience, and will make people feel better at work. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that these 64% uh, of people looking for another job is going to drop because people mm. say, it's true, I could earn more in another place, but I feel so great and I feel seen and I feel supported and inspired by my leader. Okay. That's what I let's, want let's, let's, let's drop it by, by going back to one word I love it, uh, when you said consciousness. So on leadership and consciousness, Connecting the dots, how does your understanding of consciousness and human development inform the approach to develop or improve the leaders? Yeah. So we say conscious leaders are leaders who have a self-awareness and a system awareness. Mm -hmm. Self-aware is knowing what's happening inside you. And harmonizing, and that's what we call, we work with by harmonizing, uh, sorry, humanizing and harmonizing. Humanizing is what does a leader need to touch the four ways of knowing? Your, your intellectual knowing is important, but your emotional knowing is important. Your intuition is important. And what is your body telling you? What is the stress telling you in your system? Being aware of that, that's, so important. Aware of the world around you and knowing what is happening around you. Conscious leadership means knowing that these two impact each other mm. and that you have a choice. You have always a choice. 
The moment that leaders say, I can't, I have no choice, then they are in the victim energy and then they need to talk to me because I'll help them to give a new perspective on, you always have a choice. Unless you stay a pilot and you stay in your reactive pulse. But how can we move conscious leaders means from reactive pulse to responsive choice. A choice that benefits you, the other, and the bigger system. Hmm. I love at the beginning when you say clarity is a key. Uh, let's let's do this. What are the key characteristics of conscious leader and how it can comp- contribute to building this thriving, sustainable organization? Let's say, how does he look? Like? What's the feature of this conscious leader? If you ask me to describe myself in three words, then I'm going to give the same answer than to the question that you ask. What should a leader do? And I can only say it and share it because I it's my intention and my purpose to embody it and to share it with others. I can't ask something from leaders if I'm not going through this process myself. First of all, presence. Mm. What is your presence? How do you show up? How, who do you choose to be? And how do you choose to show up? Presence. And what's mm. the impact on people? How does your presence impact? And you know from experience, if the team is in the room waiting and the leader comes in, enters the room, you can feel either there is an uplifting energy because the leader is there or the energy is dropping and suddenly it's silent. Mm. What is this? Secondly, my first core value is presence. My second core value is silence, stillness. And silence, stillness, we can go, yeah, we can talk about each of these three words for half an hour. So, Silence means reflecting in your head, but also at the table. Silence means allowing the others to talk. You don't have to tell everything you know to show that you know it. You have to hold a space as a leader where you invite people to share and to show them at their best. A leader is helping others to be the best leader they can be. Hmm. You do that, and that's the third core value, questions. A leader doesn't need to have the answers to all the questions. And neither a leader has to be able to ask the right questions at the right time. And with presence, silence, and questions, these three core values, I live my life as a partner, husband, as a father, a grandfather, as a coach, consultant, as a facilitator, and as a mentor of leaders, as much as possible, every time of my day, this is my way of being. And this is what I invite leaders to reflect on. Presence, silence, and questions. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, um, the time is running very fast. And uh, I would love... To, to, to leave our audience with something to ponder. Um, so if we could rewrite one limiting belief about ourselves, what would it be and how might this, that change our lives and, and, and the world around us, in, in the work environment, in the friend network, in the, uh, the relatives, all that? How can I be conscious about all the, the, the things around me and take uh, that step that is courageous enough to leave an impact? Yeah. It's a big question and it's a big response. But if we can walk away from our membership of the Not Enough Club with an embodied belief that I have enough I am enough, and there is enough for all to share, then your life, the workplace, and the world would be a very different place. I have enough, 
I am enough and there is enough for all to share. Love Welcome, you. my world. Amazing. Okay, lastly, where can uh, our audience connect with you and learn more about this? Not it's club. consciousconsulting.ae. We are in the Middle East, in the Emirates. We work uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, www.consciousconsultingoneword.ae. And that's where you mm -hmm. find everything. Building organizations where people thrive, no one is left behind, and we do it by humanizing and harmonizing. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, really insightful. And I wish we could have more time to discuss even further, because it's like, just like we said, every question has to have one of its own session alone. Yeah. So oh, amazing. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity, Daniel. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure to have you here on Monday Talks, and we look forward to see our audience apply these transformative uh, principles in their lives. Thank so you, to you. To you, our viewers, remember to follow, like, subscribe, share this Monday Talks for more insightful conversation like this one. Until next time, stay empowered and keep that smile. Take care. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Daniel. Bye. Bye. -bye.